That exhaust is basically like a thousand bald eagles waving their flags and shouting in the faces of those who try to defy American motorsports from the mid-60s. America! This is Superformance in Irvine, California. They build cars like this. We're gonna go inside, meet with the man behind the company, and hopefully pry a set of keys away. Lance, I gotta tell you, I think uh, we're new best friends. You're my favorite guy on the planet. What is going on in here in the Superformance garage show? Superformance is a company that specialized in 60s vehicles. Probably 15 years ago, we started talking to Carroll Shelby, and at the time, he said no. After a couple of years, he finally agreed, and we also negotiated to build the Shelby Cobras too. All along, we wanted to build the Daytona, but the Daytona was the, you know, that's the creme de la creme. That was, that's the gold standard of, of the Shelby cars that Carroll did. We knew we wanted to get the original players involved, so we first approached Peter Brock, and we kept knocking on Peter's door, and eventually he came to South Africa and visited, and he was blown away. He was very impressed. And that was the birth of the 9000, the CSX 9000. It's a gentleman tourer that you can go play with on the track. I've actually driven one. Yours looks nicer. And I'm gonna to try to get the keys from you to drive one piece. Yeah, we're gonna do that today. Yeah. Told you, Thanks. best friends. There best friends. <laughs> oh god, that sounds good. This car came to be because Shelby and his crew were getting their butts kicked while they were trying to drive the Cobras down the Molson straight at Le Mans. Those open top cars couldn't match the top speed of the Ferraris. So they went back to the drawing board. Carroll reached out to his friend Pete Brock and they enlisted the help of Ken Miles. And they came up with this. And that's awesome. They took this car back to Le Mans. And then in 1965, what they did was they put up a big 200 mile per hour American Stars and Stripes colored middle finger to Enzo and his flunkies. These cars, quite frankly, kicked serious ass. One of the original cars will cost you somewhere between 10 and 20 million, if not more, if one comes up for sale. These cars are just under $200,000 and they're worth every goddamn cent. specific car here is packing a 427 cubic inch V8 of American love. It originally was a 351 Ford engine and then Roush got a hold of it and made it so much better. Sitting on top is a beautiful eight stack injection that just looks as wonderful as the car does on the outside. On the exterior of the car you walk up, it's an iconic shape and you fall in love right away. Then you slide into the seat and the first thing you take in is the noise. The side pipe exit exhaust come down and exit just past my hip, near my ear. And it's fucking glorious, the noise that comes out of here. This car is making about 550 horsepower at the crank, which is plenty, because this probably weighs right around, oh, nothing. Now, I said it could be daunting, but it really isn't. You've got a six-speed T56 gearbox, which is a wonderful tight shifting unit. The clutch is nicely weighted. It's not too heavy, it's not too light. The throttle is a little touchy. The steering is quicker than you'd expect because this car does have power steering. You've got massive 285 series Nitto Tri-5 tires. You've got 18-inch wheels. There's plenty of grip underneath. This thing has a large enough footprint so that you can enjoy yourself on a canyon road like this. I mean, these were originally race cars, but now they're even better because the seats are comfortable. It's still a race car for the street, but it's far more livable, if that's even possible. Listen to that noise, noise. Ah, it never gets old. This Superformance Daytona Coupe is one hell of a car, both to look at and to drive. There's a chance that you're never gonna get to drive one. Hell, there's a chance that you might not ever see one because they're rare, even in replica form. This is what I'd consider a once-in-a-lifetime car. The original, that's a never-in-a-lifetime car. 